Hello. Today I'm here to talk to you about selecting, painting, and installing figures on your layout, and especially today into uh, these MTH Premier 70-foot Madison cars. Uh, I have three sets of these Madison cars. Uh, I have this Norfolk and Western set. I have another set in uh, Nickel Plate Road and a third set in Erie Livery. Now the N&W set and the Nickel Plate set came out in 98 and in 2000 respectively. And the Erie set came out in 2016. Now the, the first two sets did not have figures in them. The Erie set does have figures in them. So sometime between 2000 and 2016, MTH decided to go ahead and put people figures in their passenger cars. You see here I've got a wide array of uh, figures sitting here. You know, these are ones from China. I've got some other ones that are from Prizer, I think it is, and I have quite a number of them here from Artista. So this is a bit of a variety of figures that uh, are available. Um, so before we get started at even installing any figures into anything, let's take a look at the f closer look at the figures themselves. Okay, here we've got a set of 100 seated figures that uh, just came in the mail the other day and I've gone through them all and I've sorted them out according to the pose that the figures are in and I have a total of I see was it one two three four five six seven got eight different poses now you may have noticed that you know, like these two rows right here of these women, uh, those are all of the same pose. But I've got, uh, what is it, eight of these women up here that are all painted the same, like yellowish, orange, whatever you might want to call that, I don't know. Uh, and then I've got four women here painted in pink, three in red, and one in purple. Now, I don't know if anybody wants to say that I'm going to be particular about this or not. You know, maybe I am being too picky, but I'm looking at it from this point of view that uh, if I've got one of these women in one of my passenger cars, myself, I do not want to duplicate this same woman in the same color scheme. They can be in a different, in the same exact pose, but not in the same color dress. Okay? I've got two sets of passenger cars that I'm going to be installing these figures in. So there's eight cars in each set, <coughs> and each set has a baggage car and an RPO. Now the baggage car and the RPO will not need any figures in it. So that leaves me with six cars left. Uh, the combine and then the coaches and then of course the uh, the observation car. So what I'm going to do is at this point I'm going to take and start sorting these out even further. Um, and I will explain that in just a moment. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> I'm back again. And I'll show you what I mean by sorting these things out even further. Here's this one set of these uh, figures here that they're all the same pose, but you'll notice that I've got four different colors. <clears throat> now, I don't mind them having the same pose, I just don't like them to have the same color, at least in one set of cars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one figure of each color, 
and put them together as a set. Now since I have two sets of passenger cars that I'm going to be doing, one set will get used for one set of cars, the other set of figures will get used for the second set of cars. That way I have this, might have the same pose, but at least I have four different colors. It's the reason I say this is because, in my opinion, when the cars are running, even if you're running them very slow so that you can, you know, um, really see the figures inside the cars, you're really not going to notice the pose that the figures are in as much as you would notice um, the color of the clothing that they're wearing. So this is why I'm going to take and I'm sorting them like this so that I have different colors. Because in the real world, when you take a, a, a set of passenger cars, and if you were to look at all of the people in real life that are on uh, you know, that train, there's really not going to be two people dressed identically. It would be a really rare situation if that did happen. So I'm going for the fact that I don't care what pose they're in. I just don't want duplicate colors of the same pose. Okay, so now you saw that that first set of figures was rather easy to divide that up into the two sets that I need. So let's go on to this group of figures here. As you can see, I've got quite a number of figures in red and quite a number of figures in this yellowish orange, whatever you might want to call it. So again, I'm going to take, because I've got two purple figures, I can divide that up, one for each set. I can take two pink ones for each set. All right, and I can take two of the yellow orangish ones for each set. Okay. Now the red ones here, it looks like there's actually like two different shades of a red here, but I'm just going to consider them all as one, that they're all the same red. So I can take one red one to put with each set. So, and now I've got all of these as extras. So I've already lost, what have I got here? I got five figures there, or three, six, I got seven figures. So there's 12 figures now out of the 100 figures that are duplicates that I I can't use, so to speak. So. But I'll deal with those a little bit later and explain what I'm going to do with those a little bit later. Right now, I'm just going to take a moment and go through each of the other sets of poses and uh, sort them out accordingly, just like I've done here. And once I've done that, then we'll take a look at what we've got left and how I'm going to deal with it. Okay, now I've completed sorting out the figures. Here on the right hand side, I've got two columns here of different colored figures of each different pose, one group for each set of passenger cars. On the left over here, this is all of the extras or repeats of what I've got over here. Believe it or not, this is a hundred piece set. Out of this 100 piece set, I've got 46 repeats. 46 duplicates that I can't use. That's like almost half of the entire set. I find that appalling. Uh, I, I don't like that. I don't want to duplicate the figures. Like I said, I don't care about the pose that the figures are in. What I'm after is color variation. I want a lot of different colors. So if you notice, like say with these three women here, I've got red, yellow, and pink. Why not have one in blue? Why not have some in green? Maybe have somebody dressed in black or brown. You know, anything. So what I can do now is I'm going to take, I'm going to use my acrylic paints and a very tiny brush and I'm now going to take some of these figures that are repeats and I'm going to repaint them so that they are totally different colors so that I can now reuse them in here. Now that may seem like a tedious task and it certainly will be. But 
it's going to give me what I want. I want color variation. I don't like having duplication of colors in any set. So let's begin at repainting some of these figures. Okay everyone, before we move on to actually painting the figures uh, of that 100 piece set, I wanted to show you this 25 piece set which I just got in the mail today. This was a totally different set altogether and uh, you know, I'm going to take my time talking in, in this segment here because I want you people to really study these figures and look these figures over because in this particular set there are actually 25 different poses. There are no two figures in this entire set that are in the same exact pose. They're all 100% different. Okay. The other thing is, is look at the color. You don't see, yeah, you might see, you know, some light blue, you know, here and there and so on or whatever. But they're in different outfits. Instead of, you know, having, you know, like this particular woman that's down here, you know, in the corner here. This woman happens to be in the same exact pose as one of the figures in the 100-piece set. But look at the extreme of the detail that they've gone into at painting this figure. They've got the dress painted green. They left the hands that are folded there in her lap are a flesh tone color. She's got some brown stockings on. She's got some black up there on the neckline, probably for like an under bodice or something like that. Um, instead of just painting the whole figure green. Okay. Um, you know, here I've got two two gentlemen that have their legs crossed, but if you notice that their arms are in totally different positions. So again, you know, and then again also notice that you know they've got like this guy's shirt is blue, his pants are gray. They've got a, a stripe going down there in front for his tie. They've got the flesh tone of his hand that's out here on top of his knee. Likewise with this guy here. You know, he's got the gray shirt, the brown pants. The hands are not painted, you know, the gray color or the brown color like it was in the 100-piece set. They've got the, the white collar of his shirt up here on the top. They've got the, uh, look like either brown or black there for a tie. And so, a much better detailed set. So, yeah, I paid a little bit more for it, but I got a lot more of what I really wanted to have for the figures for my passenger cars. So this is just a, you know one example and it goes to show that just because you're able to get a hundred figures for eight bucks is not always the greatest deal. This is a 25 piece set. I paid almost twice as much for this set as I did the hundred piece set but I don't have to sit here and repaint a bunch of figures. Okay, here we are. We're back again. <clears throat> I have a few different tools that I use here. I got these things here that I like to use. I think these are called forceps. They lock into place so that you can grab hold of something and just hold on to it. Those come in very handy. I've got a couple different sizes of those. I also have these tweezers that are spring loaded and they make it really nice that I can just grab onto the figure like that and then it makes it really nice for me to be able to hold on to them to be able to repaint them. There's a little bit smaller set and then of course a very fine tipped uh, good quality brush to use. So let's just take and get, uh, get moving here. I'm going to be using these set particular um, figures here because I've got four of them and so I'll be taking and I'll be painting two of them one color and this doesn't take all that long to do you know you can get in here and very quickly and easily I'm just using this uh, acrylic paint that I got from uh, from Walmart and you can see that this you know it's a little bit tedious to get in here and do some of this but it's really not all that bad. 
Now they happened to take and uh, got some of this pink paint on the uh, the woman's uh, hands and so forth, but I, I can take and touch that up. I see my hands are shaking a little bit here, but it's too early in the morning for some of this. Either that or I need to go take some of my meds and check my sugar level. But, uh, you know, I can get through all of this, get this painted up, and as you can see, this hasn't taken me very long to do to begin with. And there I've got a nice blue colored paint on here. I don't, I'm not going to worry about painting the bottom side where it's going to meet with the seat or the back of the legs because you're not even going to see that at all in the, uh, um, in the cars once this is mounted in the cars. But at this point, you can see that, you know, there's the one figure already painted. I can now just let that set off to the side to dry and move on with the second one. I, I kind of prefer these tweezers to, uh, to do the painting with to hold on to the figures. I find that it works out quite nicely to do that. But uh, this goes pretty quickly and it helps if you're not like me and have shaky hands at times. It happens. Nothing I can do about it right now. Unless it starts getting too bad then I can go take something for it. But as you can see, you know, I've already got the one figure done. I've almost got this one completely done. Let's see, I just need to get the back side of this arm. The side of the hip right there. And I'm good to go. So now I've got, instead of just having, you know, uh, let me see, what was it here? Instead of just having, you know, an orange, pink, purple, and red, I now have two blue ones that I can reuse. And you can see that it took a very short amount of time to do. I've got these other two figures to do. I've got some green paint here. I'm going to be painting those some green. And then I'm going to take and go through all the other uh, sets of figures and uh, get those repainted. You know, give us some more uh, color variety and then I'll be good to go. Alright, after spending a couple hours here going through and repainting a bunch of these, I think you can see that there's a dramatic difference in the variety of color that I have. Granted, I still have the eight different poses, but at least I have a much greater variety of color, and that's more of what I'm after. So I think at this point, uh, some of these need to let the paint dry a little bit yet. So uh, we'll let that dry, and then I can move on to preparing them to install into the cars. Okay, now that I've got all of my figures laid out here. I've got them divided up into the two groups <coughs> for each set of cars. I still have one more thing to do before I can prepare these uh, uh, to prepare these figures to be installed into the passenger cars. And that is is that if you'll notice that their backsides have got paint on them. I can't I don't want the paint on there for the simple reason that if I take and just glue these in the way they are I'm going to be actually gluing the paint to the seat in the car and not the figure. So I like to take a fine file and sit here and 
is take and file off the paint so that I have at least at plus having a, a bit of a flat surface here so that I can take and remove the paint so I'm right down to the plastic of the figure so that when I glue them in I've got the plastic of the figure being glued directly to the plastic of the car of the seats in the car so and not having any paint in between and this will give you a much better uh, glue adhesion and not have to worry about the figures coming loose because the paint came loose from the figure so now I'm going to go through and prepare all of these by filing the the bottom of them so that I can get good uh, glue adhesion okay now I've got this set of figures prepared I've got my rail car here I've already removed the uh, the screws there are two screws at each end two screws in the middle so we can now remove that and then just simply remove the frame and set it off to the side from here it's a matter of just lifting up to get a little bit stuck sometimes need a little bit of more effort sometimes to get them out this one's being a royal pain there we go this just lifts out and there's your seats so I can then take the shell put it off to the side and now I'm ready that I can start laying out my figures is upon where I want them they may not fit right away so because there's going to be some modifications that may need to be done to some of these figures uh, one thing I did learn from the first couple of cars that I did is right here in the center of the car where the two center screws come up there's a post on the inside of the body if you go to put a figure in here you could end up blocking the um, that post from being able to come down through there so you might want to be extremely wary as far as placing any figures right here in the center um, plus there's um, the divider between the windows it's right there that blocks the view of anybody sitting there anyways so you might as well just go ahead and avoid that if you want your figures to be seen but right now it's just basically a matter of somewhat laying out uh, you know where you want the figures to be placed at just randomly placing some in here now some of them like I said I need to modify this woman's not going to fit in there very well but uh, this will make a world of difference on the appearance of the rail cars and uh, let's see I'm going to try to fit 13 people into this car somehow something like that and now it's a matter of just modifying the, the the people to get them to fit and such as say this woman here because of the position of her legs okay she's got this leg that comes towards the back all right that's interfering with the body sitting on the seat properly I'm just going to take some cutters here you're not going to see the legs anyways so just take and cut that leg off you're not even going to see the legs and you can just throw that away and now you can see that this woman sits in the seat or she should sit in the seat a little bit better looks like I need to file a little bit of that leg off of there yet and quite get all of it off of there so we'll get that taken off of there clean up any flashing it may have developed in there now she sets in the seat pretty pretty nice since she's facing the other way we'll put her in here so that she's facing the window and I'm also noticing that she does her her bottom does not set all the way down to the seat because the le other leg the remaining leg is a little too long so again all I'm going to do is I'm going to just take and cut the foot off now it's sitting directly on the seat 
you're not even going to see that foot that that foot is missing uh, once the car is all put back together uh, so that's perfectly fine with this guy here you know this toe that's over here is sticking way out too far between the seat so we're just going to take and cut that toe off and it looks like I've got a same similar situation as I did with that woman the legs are slightly too long so I'm just going to cut the feet off and now he sits in the seat much better so I just continue like this until I have all the figures positioned where I want them fitted so that they fit into the seats properly and then I'll be ready to start okay. putting them back in. <clears throat> now I've got all the figures fitted to fit into the seats well enough and I'm ready to start gluing them in. Now I like using this uh, gel type uh, super glue uh, because it does uh, it does fill gaps a lot better but it's a matter now of just putting a little bit of glue on there and setting the figure down into place and then that won't take long for that glue to set up and I'll be all set and ready to go so I'll just continue gluing these things in and then I can reassemble the car now that all of the figures are glued in I can reassemble the entire car We'll just simply start by making sure that I get things lined up here correctly. Slide this insert back into the body. And once that's in place, I can set the frame back down in. Get my centered underbody detail put back in place. Insert my screws give it a test and make sure that I've got my lights are still working and I'm all set to go. Okay now that we've got the figures in the car, the car is lighted, the lights are working and as you can see here you know this makes just a, a world of difference on the appearance of your cars by simply having figures in there and the variety of color along the way. Well, we've got this car done, and now I can just go ahead and I can move it uh, forward with the rest of the cars between this set and the other set and get them completed, and I'll have a really nice looking set with some people figures inside the cars. I hope that this video has been helpful to uh, many of you and uh, perhaps some sort of inspiration that this is a project that you can do yourself. You don't always have to pay somebody else to do it. But the main thing is to watch out for is that when buying your sets of figures, don't always get like the 100 piece set. Yes, it's cheaper, but look what you end up going through. When I had, you know, out of my 100 piece set, I had half the figures, I had to repaint them. It's usually better to take and shop around, spend a few extra dollars, stop being so darn cheap, and just get a set that has the greater variety of poses of your figures with, again, the greater variety of color, and you'll be much happier. Happy railroading to everybody, and have a great day.